The sun is a star, like billions of others we see in the night sky. It's unbelievably huge. You could fit thousands upon thousands of Earths inside it and still have room for plenty more. Though it's made up primarily of hydrogen and helium, the lightest elements in the universe, it makes up more than 99% of all of the matter in our solar system. Its fusion furnace converts more than 4 million tons of hydrogen to helium every second. It's more than all the energy ever produced by mankind. On Earth, we see this energy as light and feel it as warmth. The innermost of the planets is located just a stone's throw from the sun. Mercury is a small, barren, and scorched planet orbiting only 50 million kilometers from the sun. Its proximity to the sun renders it inhabitable for life as we know it. For its size, however, Mercury has a very strong gravitational pull, 0.38 g's. Its heavy metallic core makes up about 40% of its volume. Mercury looks like it poured what was once a much larger planet. There are different theories of what happened with the rest of it. Mercury's rotation on its axis is very slow. One day on Mercury is two Mercury in years long. Such slow rotation and lack of heat conducting atmosphere causes huge differences in surface temperature between day and night side. The maximum temperature on the day side can reach up to 420 degrees Celsius, while the night side is only at negative 160 degrees. Our next destination is Venus, currently located on the other side of the Sun. Venus looks lovely from afar. It is the brightest planet in the solar system as viewed from Earth, wrapped in yellowish clouds. Known on Earth as the morning star and the evening star, it was long believed to be a lush, tropical paradise. In the 20th century, it was found that Venus is in fact among the most hostile environments for life in our solar system. Those bright clouds are made up of sulfuric acid, and the atmosphere is dominated by carbon dioxide. Atmospheric pressure on the surface is more than 90 times higher than on the Earth, and the maximum temperatures can reach up to 460 degrees Celsius. Venus is an extreme example of global warming. Such harsh conditions, however, do not stop futurists from envisioning ways to colonize Venus. With the technology that we currently possess, no permanent surface colonies can be created, but maybe it will be possible to build floating cities high in the Venus atmosphere, where temperatures and atmospheric pressures are much less extreme. Following the success of the Apollo moon landings, the manned flyby of Venus was proposed. The flight would have been almost a year long. Considering the average 10-day missions to the moon, it would have been the most ambitious manned spaceflight ever taken. We now jump to a marvelous blue planet, our home planet, Earth. Past the barren and rocky moon, at 150 million kilometers from the sun, Earth is the only planet currently known to support life. It is the largest of the terrestrial planets in the solar system and orbits just the right distance from the sun to maintain water in a liquid state and allow life to flourish. 
In fact, the surface of the Earth is dominated by water. Oceans cover more than half of the Earth's surface. It's been more than three and a half billion years since the first living organisms appeared in Earth's primordial seas. Our first ancestors first appeared about two million years ago, and modern humans have existed for about 200,000 years. Despite the short time we've been here, as we fly 1,500 kilometers above North America, Footprints of our civilization are clearly visible. A glittering spider web of city lights and street illumination highlights areas of high population density on our planet. But we must leave this marvel behind and see what other wonders there are to see and explore in our solar system. Mars, nicknamed the Red Planet. More than anything, this barren planet has captured the imagination of science fiction writers, film directors, and many ordinary people. Deimos, the smaller of Mars' two moons, is just a small rock, about a dozen kilometers across. In the centuries before interplanetary probes and high-powered telescopes, humans looked at Mars and saw islands, continents, seas, cities, forests, irrigation channels, and anything their imagination could think of. The Mars we see today is a cold and dusty iron oxide desert covered with a thin carbon dioxide atmosphere. The planet has long lost its magnetic field, and if it had a thicker atmosphere in the past, it has been carried away by the hot solar wind. Phobos, like Deimos, is probably nothing more than an asteroid captured by Mars's gravity. Evidence that Mars has been more active in its past are visible on its surface. Olympus Mons is the biggest mountain in the entire solar system, more than 27 kilometers high and 500 kilometers wide. The other three volcanoes are small only in comparison with Olympus Mons. They are still far bigger than any mountain or volcano on our planet. Mountains are not only the huge landmarks on Mars. This is Valles Marineris, the largest canyon in the solar system. It goes on for 4,000 kilometers almost a quarter away around the planet and would stretch all the way across Europe. More than five kilometers deep, the canyon floor bears evidence of water flowing in it millions of years ago. This is it for the inner planets. Jupiter, the innermost of the gas giants, is located three times farther from the sun than Mars. Between them is an asteroid belt, the cosmic rubble field of a planet that never formed. 